Welcome back. Member of the co-chairs for the peace talks between the government and the LTTE, the United States is urging government to use the all-party conference power-sharing proposals as the basis for future peace talks. The all-party conference was set up by President Mahinda Rajapaksa six months ago to recommend constitutional changes to solve the ethnic conflict. Kevin Jacobs started a wide-ranging interview with the US ambassador here, Robert Blake, by asking how he thinks the current impasse in the peace process can be overcome. Well, um, the United States believes that there could be no military solution to the conflict. Um, rather, we believe that the answer lies in a negotiated settlement that meets the aspirations of all of Sri Lanka's communities, be they Sinhalese, Tamil, or, or Muslim. Um, we further believe that the agreement now between the SLFP and the UNP marks a wonderful opportunity and one of the best in recent years to uh, achieve that settlement because uh, the two major parties are now working together. Uh, and so there's this important APC process that's underway. And we hope that that will um, rapidly produce a power sharing proposal that will form the basis for peace talks. Now, through the ages, there have been many efforts to come up with solutions to the ethnic conflict, but uh, this mechanism hasn't really fallen in place. Um, the US currently is also um, in, in uh, having many issues uh, fighting against terror uh, worldwide. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you were to think a little bit deeper on why this mechanism doesn't work out, uh, how would you see that? Well, I don't want to try to speculate on, on the reasons why things haven't worked out in the past. I'm just, we're, we're trying to look ahead now and try to look at uh, the possibilities. And as I said, I think there's a very good opportunity now to achieve peace and to uh, stop the fighting. And that's certainly our, our major objective. Um, we strongly support the, the Norwegian facilitation effort. Uh, and we don't believe there's any reason to change that. And we also strongly support the role played by the Sri Lankan monitoring mission. I think they're very, playing a very, very important role as well. Uh, to what extent would the US get involved uh, towards uh, directly assisting in solving the issue? Well, the United States is involved in the sense that we're one of the co-chairs, along with the EU and Japan and Norway. Uh, in, in this process. And uh, so we are playing a very active role. Uh, we hosted the most recent co-chairs meeting in Washington, and we are working very closely with our co-chair uh, allies in this process. Now, the LTT is, a, is an organization that's banned in the United States. Right. Yet uh, in Sri Lanka, um, they are invited to talks, and they are willing to have talks, uh, but it just doesn't happen because there's um, maybe somewhat friction within Sri Lankan uh, political parties. Uh, how do you see this situation? Well, we don't see that there's any conflict. Um, for the moment, the United States doesn't have any contacts with the LTTE, uh, but that could change. Uh, if the LTTE is willing to uh, abandon terrorism and renounce violence on a sustained basis, we would be willing to consider reconsider our policy. But for the moment, the LTTE is, is the uh, party that has been chosen under the uh, 2002 ceasefire agreement as the, the uh, party that represents the interests of the Tamil community. And uh, we so see no reason to change that. Uh, and uh, we hope, again, that a uh, peace proposal can be arrived at as quickly as possible and that that then can form the basis for negotiations. Uh, moving on from there, uh, the conflict has retarded uh, Sri Lanka's economic growth for the past more, more than two decades. Uh, within the recent few years, there was a proposal from, um, uh, from Sri Lanka to the US on a free trade agreement, which, was, um, which didn't work out. Uh, what are some of the reasons, do you think? Well, the principal reason was um, that when we, when we, the United States, sign a free trade agreement, um, those agreements typically cover 95% uh, or more of all of the trade and goods and services uh, that we have with that country. Uh, so it's a very comprehensive agreement. Uh, in the South Asian context, uh, many of the South Asian countries often have so-called free trade agreements that in fact do not cover a large proportion of goods and services and have very large negative lists, that is, uh, goods and services that are exempt from the, the treaty. Uh, but we don't believe in that philosophy. Our philosophy is should, should be comprehensive. And 
At this point, the Sri Lankan government is not willing to consider that kind of comprehensive agreement because there are many sectors that they are not prepared to open up yet. Education uh, or, or growing education is one of uh, your favorite areas as well, uh, as you had mentioned quite recently. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a growing amount of Sri Lankan students who take off to the States and get educated in uh, American universities, and this is growing. It, what, is, um, what, what are some of the initiatives that uh, the U.S. is taking to either uh, to improve or increase this um, uh, exchange of students? Well, um, I, as you say, I'm a, I'm a very big enthusiast for in, uh, promoting American education. Um, we have approximately 4,000 universities in the United States offering a huge range of uh, different kinds of education. There are approximately 2,000 Sri Lankan students uh, studying in the United States, and we'd like to have as many as possible uh, come to join those 2,000. And so uh, we are actively working to promote American education, to explain the values and the diversity of American education. Uh, and I think that we have a lot of, of things to offer. I mean, if you look at the, um, for example, the number of Nobel Prize winners, uh, roughly a third of them have come from the United States, and almost all of them have been researchers associated with American universities. That's because of the very high quality of research that is being done in the United States and the very strong support that many universities receive from the, from the private sector. Um, so we believe there are wonderful opportunities, including many scholarship opportunities for, for Sri Lankan students. And we have something called the U.S. Educational Foundation here uh, that can provide all Sri Lankan students a, uh, all kinds of information about the opportunities for them. And so I, I really encourage uh, students to, to look at that and also to not be uh, swayed by arguments that it's hard to get a visa. It's not hard to get a visa. It's, it's very easy to get a visa as long as you're going to a good accredited school and you speak decent English and you also have the, the means to pay for your, for your education or have a, a scholarship of some sort. Some of the children in Sri Lanka who have been affected by the tsunami right. and are losing the benefits of education, they, they're not able to go to school probably because there's no schools there. Um, having said that, there's a lot of aid which was promised to Sri Lanka from a lot of different countries and um, is, is, is the conflict, uh, the ethnic conflict or any, uh, what are the reasons that um, sometimes might um, uh, slow aid flow into the country because uh, it's not that easy to rebuild in North and East as it is in the South. I think the conflict has had an impact on, on the tsunami uh, rehabilitation process. Um, speaking for, for America, that's not as much the case. M most of our uh, tsunami reconstruction efforts are, are in the east near Ampara where we're uh, reconstructing a bridge near Aragon Bay, we're helping to rebuild several harbors, we're uh, building some vocational training centers to address the issue that you addressed. Um, and, and those projects are all well underway and, and doing well. But in, as you say, in other parts of the country, further to the north, uh, there are, are significant problems because of the fighting. And it's very difficult for NGOs to gain access to those areas. And, um, and there's a lot of tension. You know, there's a lot of groups that are operating in there that make it very difficult for, for uh, NGOs to operate. So I think uh, that, that underlines why it's so important to uh, have both sides come to the table as quickly as possible and begin sustained peace negotiations so that an end can be brought to the fighting and an end to the human rights violations and an end to the humanitarian problems. I mean, 215,000 uh, Sri Lankans are now uh, internally displaced people. That is about 1% of your country as a result of the conflict. And uh, that's certainly not good for development. New go-between industry emerges to help business process outsourcing. Stay with us for the details.